Welcome to my beginner's PvP Let's Play Guide series thing. Even though it is a series, these episodes can be viewed independently of each other. On this episode, I'm going to venture in, learn Mitra, get some camels for a mount and a tame, and go get some good levels at the Triple Sarg dungeon. We'll be building a little hut, beginner hut, along our way. I've got a bedroll here because there's a lot of sneaky things. On last episode, I got a whole bunch of stuff. I found some things over at the sinkhole. I went and got the dragon bone recipe. There was some free things. Went and got the sorcery cave. Went and got not very many levels. Potted along, so to speak. But if you haven't checked it out, do check out that episode. Like I said, you don't have to view them all, but it does help a little bit with the storyline. If you are viewing it independently, I'll be going over a bunch of stuff in this series. I'll be teaching you how to raid, how to level good, how to fight to some degree, and a whole bunch of things that are going to make your life a whole lot easier. We do have a sandstorm coming in a moment. So that's fun. Luckily, my bedroll's close by. There's an emote here that you can touch. I have a whole other thing where I go through and read those video thing. If you want to check that out, I go, whoa, through a whole bunch of the different laws. Not meant to jump off the edge there. Yeah, sandstorms will mess you up if you don't have a bedroll. I'm probably going to repeat die because I don't have a house to be in. I don't think inside there is going to give me shelter. I'm trying to learn that recipe. Thank you. It's really hard to get out from inside there too, so we're not going to do that. Let's quickly learn the Mitra teacher. These guys dropped some things. We can hack them up, get some cure-all glands. I might be able to climb up here before the sandstorm comes. I doubt it though. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe. Some bits are a little less glitchy to get up than others. There we go. And you usually learn the precepts of a tapestry of Zath rather in here, so I don't have to go venture in somewhere. But that was uh, the first religion I chose. But I can also use that to get some zeal later on, so I'm going to take all of that. You can also go into a cave over on the other side of that pillar, I believe. Is that sandstorm going to miss us? Because if so, that's really goddamn handy right now. I like that a lot. But now we've learned Mitra. Venture across the oasis. We're here again. We're going to go buy some camel pants and build a little hut. Avoid that guy because he's the one skull and he's mean don't like him there's some more aloe and resources around here if you don't have enough i have plenty and i'm quite full until i get a few more levels bunch of coal around to get some of those levels and to be fair aloe if i could hit it actually goes okay too so it could be worth just going around and hitting the aloe if you're still low level and around here. As the darkness is darknessing, I'm just building myself a little hut with a kind of pointy roof. Just because it's a little easier than the two-story thing I was going to build out of other stuff. You can select building pieces with the middle mouse button. You can delete pieces again. Building is quite easy. Sometimes you can rotate pieces, other times it's the deck and wants you to place more walls. So that wasn't meant to go there. There we go. I messed up down there. There we go. Just to make sure there's no gap. I can then relocate my furnace inside while it's full of stuff. It's also an easy way to move while you're full. You just put everything in there and then you're not full. Terrible example. Or you could just move it around like so. Anyway, like right now I'm a bit heavy and I don't want to walk all that way with my heaviness. So I'll pop that in there and then I can just relocate this guy. Providing surfaces flat, you've pressed R. A certain distance, you can get too far away and you can't place it in enemy territory around NPC camp. You want to place down yourself some basic benches so you can craft some slightly better aloe potions. The blacksmith bench so you can craft some iron reinforcements. They're expensive so you want to try and get enough to get the tier 2 one which you unlock at level 30. Carpenter's bench for the same reason so you can make a better carpenter's bench and a few other benches that you need for doing stuff. If you haven't gotten lucky and managed to find a bit of shape wood or hardened brick and stuff like that or regular brick and in this case, to make a stable, you might need to craft some stone into brick, etc. So simply popping some stone in there, it'll make brick. If you get yourself up 50 iron bars, you can make yourself your first cauldron under alchemy. And some fiber and some resin will make stone consolidant, which will make hardened brick. By all means, you can drop all the crap that you've found by this point and just continue on to leveling. I like to make a little base point, get a few things underway. I think I explained that in the last episode. Just saves me some time later on as a solo adventurer for the most part. So while I'm off doing other things, this stuff can be grinding away for Ron. Now this might seem like a bit of an obscure spot, but we have come here for a reason. Not only do I get to learn the major religion and be close to the Jebel Saga dungeon, the Rhinos. Sir, I wanted to boop boop you. 
In theory, I'd have some agility points, but don't yet. The nice source of some thick hide. And then we can make our way over here and visit a little merchant. There's also some boxes, which are nice. If we buy some camel calves off him, we can put them in our stable. Wearing only one fiber to tame. It'll turn the rest into compost or poop, whatever it's called. If it's finished taming and you haven't taken it out, you can also put them in an animal pen and get one that you cannot ride. You can either make a small animal pen or a big animal pen, but the big animal pen is substantially bigger. But you can tame more guys but one of the other fun things about here not just the camels and the rhinos is you can actually get a legendary weapon really easily also some other pets that you can acquire inside of the den itself but we're not going to venture in there right now it's a good source of zeal here as there's lots and lots of people you're harvesting for gods it's a very um unutilized you can only get good bow smith guys here carpenters you get a whole bunch of other crafting thralls so it's just a fun place to come and start out especially if you're not really confident confident in going anywhere a little bit more crazy like mounds which generally has a lot more people at it too and there's lots of sneaky little places that you can hide around here if you haven't seen my rat hole guide you should probably check it out if you're considering playing pvp anyway i say that and <laughs> look here's the base salt and a bit of salt about but just up here we can in fact find on the bench some claws and then we can even fight these guys if we wanna we can tame them also, but probably not at the moment. Because I'm not very skilled. Whoa, bro. I'm down. Did I climb? Thank you. Let's try that again. I'm still probably going to die. But you can sometimes get them a little bit before they stand up and get you. Whoa, they got me. But my bed's just there. They will regenerate their health by the time I get back there, so I might not end up messing with them at the moment. I don't know. Oh, I died a lot closer to them than I remember. With all my stuff. Try to heal. Ah, they catch me from so far away is the problem. Oh, I seem to have lost one though. That's fun. Wait for them to attack and then go in. Ooh. Why not get caught in his nonsense? He's cool. I could for sure be using the legendary weapon right now, but I don't want to. He would be a very good guy to tame, but I also don't really have the capabilities. Tame a guy right now? I kind of do. I could. I could tame him. He would be handy. But I'm also getting camels, which basically do the same thing. I'll leave, not leave him for too long by himself. The other guy will, will respawn. No, uh, I'm going to try and take him out. Whoa. That's lucky because the server's going down. Oh, Jesus Christ. Getting caught in nonsense. Thunder's not good because it makes your um, armor go away. Oh. There we are. He dropped a backpack, which will probably have some goodies in it. I should probably skin me and him. That weapon will probably be back upon server reset, so that's fun. I could venture in there and get a whole lot more stuff, but I do not want to die, and I will absolutely die in there. But hopefully upon server reset, I will have a whole bunch of leather that I can maybe make some shitty armor with. And my camel babies will probably be done. Then I can implement my leveling strat way easier and actually keep my resources, which is fun. And I did get some very fun supplies indeed some alchemy base some crystal nice nice can also pop this guy in here and even though it's got some grass that doesn't matter too much for me as he's actually going to be way better as a mount well that took forever for the server to come back i went and had a snack and everything but it's finally back up and it does indicate that there's probably some pretty decent bases on the server and uh, so far we found map rooms at most obelisks so that's also a good indication of a decently populated server plus all of the god around it's just late in the us for them and because the server reset i can go get those claws again in theory then we'll go have a little go i can dismantle them for some star metal i like it when it doesn't do the stuff i've crafted myself some armor this is armor i believe you either got in a battle pass of some kind or the bazaar something like that and it does me a little bit of health, a little bit of follower damage, a little bit of concussion, a little bit of stuff that's just handy for me right now. Might as well get him. Now hopefully I can fight these guys a little bit more effectively. Who we got here? Oh, definitely. 
I say that as I instantly try to get marked. The claws are in fact not back, so it must be a random reset chance. I haven't tested that out before now, so that's good to know. I'll check back if I could speak. I'll check back here later. Get all my dudes up, get all my hides. And walk back very slowly to base. We'll fill a bench, drop some stuff. If you have daggers on you, you can light thrusts forward, and that's also a lot quicker than slowly hobbling. This is what I'm doing right now. You can press numb lock and get hands free walking forward. If you can only walk slowly anyway, might as well sit back, relax, whistle your hair. Although on PvP servers, it's always good to keep an eye out. If other people are online, you might get jumped. You can simply press L and see the player list quite quickly, and it won't disturb your walking forward. If you do have happen to press the controls it'll stop you. I just press numb lock again and off we go again. You can also do all sorts of other things while you're walking like go through all your lists of things here your attributes whatever you might start randomly walking into your pen though. And we are done I have a camel mount I might even have some of these dude I do thank you you can go in there. Now you can tell ever so slightly different in the picture he is slightly bigger than the other ones. No never mind I'm just tripping you've just got to place them all now if you stupidly pick them up like I did all at once. That's what you get for playing very late at night. Oh no, there we go. The camel does not have a DK timer. The other guys do. That's weird. The rideable camel, rather. So we can pop him down and we can have a mount. By viewing his inventory, you can then put a saddle on him and then ride him. He doesn't get quite as much HP or have quite as much inventory as one of these guys. Am I gonna be able to place you? This guy looks like he has less HP right now, but he'll in fact get more later. And let's say I fix that. I might be speaking too soon we could be finding out together but he does actually have more inventory slots you can't see right now but he does but you cannot ride him you craft a saddle in the saddler's work table for a butt ton of stuff and place it on your dude and we can then ride him about which is fun just in case i die with him i'm well if he dies he has a lot of hp but just in case i might start taming another one it's handy to have goodbye there's some boxes you can touch along here, which we didn't do earlier because I was just too excited for stuff. But you can get some pretty decent things out of them. That was a big fall. Then any of the stuff you don't want when you're... Woo! High enough level that was crazy. You can dismantle the shit or place it down as actual decorations. Can I be a little less crazy with my booping? Like these guys are actually a pretty good source of silk. And we just got a whole bunch of pre-made boxes, which is good. These guys in here are all pretty aggressive, but you can get some decent guys like I mentioned earlier. So if you have a thrall wheel and you feel like doing some taming, we will be going and doing some leveling very soon. It's quite low level to learn the dismantling bench. It's like level 19 or something. And then you just simply pop everything in there and get some nice resources. Although it does cost 100 brick and 50 50 shaped wood. I mean, dried wood, dried shaped wood, insulated wood, that one. You can go even deeper and just go through the dismantler journey step and get even quicker. And I think more stuff as well in the advanced dismantling bench might as well. I know by the power of editing, it's probably hard to tell, but I've been sitting for some time and I needed to get up and take a little break and I mildly got sidetracked and now I'm not 100% sure what I was doing right before I left, but I know I am going to go level up. So that is something we are going to go do in a moment once i check to see if these daggers are back get a little bit more hide and apparently whacked around a lot i wouldn't mind some levels in me so i can get some points in strength and such i could definitely be using these legendary weapons probably help me out a bunch it's late like, i'm tired and probably shouldn't even be playing but sleepy die but just a friendly little reminder if you haven't gotten up and moved in a while yourself it's a good idea to get up and do that as sitting for too long it can be bad for you. Nope, still not back. Well, we'll see. We'll see when it comes back. I could get both camel and camel to follow me at the same time. So that's all of the inventory. And uh, we're going to take advantage of that. Heading on over towards the Jebel Sag dungeon. We can kill some dudes on the way to get a little bit of levels in them. They're um, not very good at attacking, but they'll have a go. They're pretty good at drawing aggro, though. Making our way over towards this end of the little area. We can talk to old mate, learn some midnight alchemy, and buy an actual potion. Or you can craft it up here for way more expensive. Not sure why you would, but there's that option. 
does expire pretty quick. It's going to lead us to the Midnight Grove. Drinking this water will take us to Sepumaru, which we'll do in a little bit. But for now, I'm going to hit all this stuff either with a pick or with the sickle. Whichever one happens to be your highest. I do believe my pick has a better toolkit on it. And in fact, it gives me more Amanitas, so it gives me more experience. So I'm going to go around and hit a whole bunch of these guys and then go down and hit up some of those animals and get me and myself, the thralls, some levels also because hitting the mushrooms won't level these guys up, only me. Already level 27 though. And already level 30 just from clearing that little area and killing the first two hyenas. Keep in mind this is official settings though so on PvE it may be a little bit less or if you're playing on a private server. Because this is a full time. So we're just chunking away and we're going to get lots of resources for making bombs with the hide and just periodically drop a bunch of mushrooms. Keep some because you might want some for other recipes later and you might not want to bother coming back potentially. If you do happen to die in the dungeon you will just spawn back there so you can probably run back to your stuff if you're pretty quick although if you've been taking it slow these guys may have spawned back already there are some people in here so you can get some zeal from them with the god tools excuse you dog and they do drop a little bit of armor if you do happen to run in here without any armor there are a couple of ways you can go that way obviously has pigs from the uh, little decal on the wall and this way has some more hyenas i will go both ways but i'll I'll start off with the pigs. These boxes often drop goodies and sometimes yellow lotuses, yellow lotus potions rather. Pigs are a good source of pork and pork is a good source of strength buff as well as a decent heal for your thralls. Just regular pork once cooked is good for your thralls. Don't know why I'm using that not these. I've got one. Hey you guys you're all right you're trying. And my followers are leveling up pretty nicely. Didn't actually bring a meat cleaver with me, so I'm likely not going to get any actual pork, but I will get some fur. That's all right. We do love that they mostly take the aggro, or well, at least the non-mounted one. He also does take a bit of damage, but as you can see, he does get very nice health. With all your leveling up, you also want to remember to actually put stuff into your attributes. I am um, and have been doing that, as you can see. A yellow potion, yellow lotus potions before I meant like bestial potions and these type of ones that reset your um actual attributes and such. But you do also get yellow lotus potions that might die. It's best obviously to take out all the dudes before harvesting because they can sneak up on you. And they just generally wear away at your durability, the archers. And they're predominantly archers in here. Oh, some glitchy tiles. Coming up to some wolves. They're a little bit more shit because they do some sunder. But again, they should be focusing these dudes. Make it a little bit easier for you. And there are a lot of wolves up here. So you definitely want to take it a little bit slowly. We haven't looped back and done the hyenas yet and we're already at the and the boss and I'm already level 37, almost level 38. You can dip back up here. This will lead you back towards the fork in the road, for lack of a better name. And as shit as those wolves were, they were pretty decent XP for these guys. And you can just keep looping around and doing this lot. You don't even have to do the whole dungeon or fight any of the bosses. Although you do get some Shade Bloom. I don't know why I did that on him. And uh, some other fun stuff. Some Demon Blood potentially. And we can learn the religion if we go all the way to the end. It is worthy. If you have to just start dropping stuff if you're um, wanting to keep, say, the armor, which I actually don't, you would want to drop the hide over the hyena a pelt for instance as this drop burns three or two for one tar and this is all one for one tar much better you can actually feed your followers bandages and potions if they are just taking a little bit too long to recuperate so keep that in mind sometimes you find one skulls and that's great for levels as well as getting some demon blood and some maybe other fancy stuff the fancier your whatever you're using the better you can use anything 
pink on them, but I like to use the pick. Oh, don't want to pick him. I want to skin him. And I got a bunch of demon blood now, so I'll be able to make potentially, yeah, I'll be able to make a map room and some dragon fire. And just by doing pretty much one loop, the mushrooms at the start have started spawning back. I'm already level 39. You can just keep running that little loop. Like I said, it's pretty easy. Or oh, venture deeper into the jungle. Jungle? Dungeon. That one. Or you could just leave the dungeon and return with all of your valuable hides and come back again. But you will leave and you'll end up in separate Mario, so you'll have to be underweight to ride your mount back home. And I'm always tempted to touch stuff at separate Mario. I'm gonna have to dump some more stuff. Finally, I can have glutton for punishment. It's gonna save me a lot on heals. I don't think I can be bothered doing the entire dungeon right now, but I will wait around for a few more mushrooms to respawn. Probably won't bother getting all the way to level 60 in here either, because there's some other stuff I can do on the next episode. So if you found this entertaining, do smash that like button. If you're not already, consider subscribing. Join me for the next episode and learn how to play on PvP. We'll be going into Sepimaru and finding some cool ways to cleanse our corruption, as well as finding some nice loot and potential thralls. Some very, very nice loot. So until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be, have a good one.